good morning free girls so being free is that important in my life that i changed my name many years ago to freely i therefore try to live as freely as possible that's why we chose the off-grid lifestyle we get all our water from a pure freshwater creek on the property and i aim to drink between 600 mils to one liter on rising I just feel so much happier and healthier when I am hydrated. The grey water is then recycled back into water for the fruit trees that then provides us with fruit, aka free food. I then either ride my bike or go for a short jog. And this shower is pretty much my dream come true. We've got the outdoor pure creek water underneath a forest canopy and avocado tree. So an off-grid breakfast can vary quite a bit, but we always try to eat what is grown on the property. This is guanabana or soursop grown on the property and is highly regarded for its anti-cancer properties. When grown correctly, it is quite sweet with a hint of sour. It's really good. Yeah? Mm. <laughs> Next up is Mami Sapote. It is a fruit native to Mexico and Central America. And the taste varies, but it's often like pumpkin pie with almond undertones. And the tree can grow to about 20 meters high. Mm, who doesn't like a good mango? So I really enjoy this sweet, juicy South American variety. And there are said to be over a thousand varieties of mango growing all over the world. And research has shown that antioxidant compounds in the mango fruit have been found to protect against a variety of cancers, including colon, breast, leukemia, and prostate cancers. So this is an amazing fruit, Pitahaya, or else you can call it dragon fruit. And it is definitely a bit of a laxative and it can really give your colon a good clean out. Definitely try it if you're feeling a little bit backed up. Maybe one of the most versatile and abundant crops in the world is the breadfruit. Breadfruit is an important calorie source native to Papua New Guinea, but is now spread all over tropical regions in the world. Europeans discovered breadfruit in the 1500s and were amazed and delighted by a tree that produced prolific starchy fruits that, when roasted, resembled freshly baked bread. And it's been said that regarding food, if a person was to plant 10 breadfruit trees in their life, they would completely fulfill their duty to their own as well as future generations. So if you're in the tropics, breadfruit is a very important off-grid food source which can bear fruit a couple of times a year. So as you just saw, that was a humongous breadfruit that was enough to feed Robert and I for dinner for free. And I usually just chop it up, remove the bad bits and boil with a little salt or seasoning and it's almost identical to potato, but sweeter and yummier. Abiu is a fruit native to South America. A ripe abiu has been described as tasting like cream caramel flan. So my breakfast at the moment most days consists of mangoes or of a green smoothie with water, bananas and spinach. So permaculture and off-grid living goes hand in hand and we aim to recycle as much as we can. All organic matter is composted and eventually used as a beautiful organic fertilizer for the garden. You know, when you throw your organic scraps in the bin, they just go to a landfill instead of back to nourishing earth. The property has quite a lot of bamboo, which goes nicely with the self-sustainable off-grid style of living as it can be used for a variety of purposes, including fencing. We are currently completely off the grid and using solar for all our electricity needs and satellite for internet. So after breakfast, I'll go to the YouTube cave and firstly take a look at my Instagram and answer questions, any of your questions if I have time. So my Instagram is filled with controversy, yes, because I enjoy getting people to think, you know, to think more deeply about how society is structured and hopefully inspire change. So this is one of my recent pictures and captions. Some people will find you too extreme, too passionate, too spicy, too you.
Some people will hate the way you think, speak, feel, look. Those are not your people. Stop chasing fake acceptance and adoration from others and proudly strut to the beat of your own drum. Have the ovaries to stand up and rebel against a system no matter whose toes you stand on. Be bold and unapologetically you. Your tribe will answer. So then next up, I will spend the next maybe four or five hours working on a YouTube video. And sometimes these videos take me days to put together and make because I really, I want to bring quality content to you girls. So after sitting around for hours and working on a video, I need to freshen up. So I'll usually go down to the creek and just go and chill in there and splash around a bit and just really freshen myself up for the rest of the day. Okay, free girls, so that's my morning routine for January 2018. But before I go, I want to talk a little bit about why I chose the off-grid lifestyle. As you probably noticed, interest in off-grid living has increased dramatically in recent years. In America, for instance, over the last few years, there has been a sharp rise in the number of people living off the grid, from under a million five years ago to over two million people in 2014. So what exactly is the grid? Well, it's a term used to describe the convenient interlock systems surrounding us that basically make our life easier to live. Food, gas, water, lights, communication, and hundreds more lock into the system. For example, the power grid is a system most of us depend on daily. No more relying on candles like in the olden days. Now we just flip a switch. And most of the food we buy today is from big supermarkets, which are also heavily reliant on an even bigger system and almost all dependent on big trucks. If suddenly trucks have no access to fuel, then the food delivery system will stop. You know, part of the reason we chose the off-grid lifestyle, not only is it better for the environment, but the vulnerability of the world's power grid and food supply concerns us. Many factors can influence power outages like equipment failure, communications breakdown, spikes in demand and severe weather. A good example of severe weather was Hurricane Sandy. So Hurricane Sandy knocked out power to millions of people for over two weeks. This can obviously get serious quickly if you live in a cold climate where you depend on heating. If a disaster strikes and power goes out for many months, are you prepared with enough food to eat? Will you be able to stay warm? The reality is there may not always be someone to save you and pick up the pieces. The greater the population, the bigger the strain on the system, and it is starting to show. So like millions of other people around the world, we are preparing for the possibility of the grid going down. The chances of this happening is increasing daily, and we recommend you all do your research and consider your options. Do not place too much trust in the current system as it is extremely fragile. Okay, stay safe, free girls.